Hey there, Detroit sports fanatics, and welcome to Taylor Phillips's. De welcome back to Taylor's Detroit Sports Show. I'm Taylor Phillips. Tonight on this episode of the Red Wings edition, I'm going to address a very, very serious issue. The Wings have had the pad, have had the past five seasons, and it's their injuries. And I'm going to explain this whole thing sometime within the next half hour, while the Pistons. And Clippers are going at it, tied at 53 right now with about 47 seconds or less left. Soon to be 50 to 47, that, now it is. 56 to 53, rather. I misspoke. Um, but first, let me briefly get all the routine items out of the way. You can find me on Facebook, YouTube, Google, and Pinterest as Taylor Phillips. You, you can like my page, Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports page, and join my group, Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports Group, to become a more educated Detroit sports fan. And you can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram at DT2Phillips. There's also a chat window on blogtalkradio.com on all my episodes of Taylor, all my episodes of Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports Show for you all to comment your opinions on. The guidelines, if you have called in, stay on the line. If you hang up, read, redial the number and then stay on the line. Keep it very clean. Treat the show with respect. If you don't know much about this or any Detroit sports, you can still just listen. And only I can change topics because I'm the head host of the show. Starting off, as always, with the week in review. The Red Wings perfected their week this week. Started off with a 3-2 regulation win over the Toronto Maple Leafs. Had a had a 2-0 and then 3-1 lead in both in the third period. They led 1-0 through the first two periods. They scored their first goal in the first period. That was but which was scored by Gustav Nyquist, the goose. He ended up with two goals, and Daniel Alfredson scored the game winner, what stood to be the game winner, make it 3-1. to one. And then, then on Thursday, it was, it was a thriller between the Wings and the Penguins at the Joe. The Wings led one nothing after one, just like they did against Toronto on on Tuesday. Then they went up two nothing in the second, but that, then they gave up three goals and came unglued, like they did against the Devils. But they came back in the third peri period with two goals of their own, one from Tatar and Bertuzzi. Then Craig Adams tied it at 14-17 into the third. And then we went to overtime. But not before David Legwand uh, committed a very uh, what what would have been a very costly penalty, a five-minute major for butt ending and a game misconduct. So the Wings had to withstand a five-minute power play through the through the end of regulation and the beginning of overtime, and they killed it right off. Give the young kids credit. And then when Franzen came out of the box, it, it was on. It was back and forth until the, until the final five seconds. The Red Wings had, a, had, the odd, had that three-on-two odd man rush going, and Daniel Alfredson kept surging, and he shot the puck. Flurry made the save, made the easy save, but it banked off of Rob Scuderi and, and into the net with .4 seconds left. And the referees had to review it just just to make it official, and there it was. Like I said, it was a thriller. A buzzer-beating overtime goal by the Red Wings at Joe Louis Arena. How? How? What? One more? Uh, what? What play could be more exciting in a single hockey game? 
for the Red Wings than that. Especially get by Daniel Alfredson. That could, that could, uh, that goal, that overtime winner could give the Wings a boost, in my opinion, for the rest of the of the regular season, and maybe that could that could definitely well lift them up into the playoffs. Going to Saturday, the Wings uh, got off to a bit of a slow start, but they. Uh, they lost Nicholas Cronwall on a hard hit, but um, but he returned in the second period, and, and uh, but right after Cronwall left, Kyle Quincy got called for for interference, and Miko Koivu scored right off the bat on the power play at 5:38 into the game. To make it one nothing Minnesota, but then the Wings struck back on, on their power play. Brendan Smith, his fourth goal of the season, on a backhander from David Legwan and Jakob Kindle, make it one one. We go to the second. The Wings get another power play goal. This one from David Legwan, from Jakob Kindle and Riley Shahan at 17:24 of the second period, made it. 2-1 Detroit, and and then and Jakob Kindle would end up with two assists. But then in the, th in the third period, right off from the very get-go, Johan Franzen got caught for uh, Charlie Coyle uh, for uh, hooking Charlie Coyle on, on a break on a one-on-one -on -one break, and and the referee called a penalty shot, and. Coyle fumbled the puck, but then and still scored on Howard to tie the to tie the game up for two. But it wouldn't stand it wouldn't stand for too long, as Gustav Nyquist at even strength put the Wings back up three to two with a wrister from Riley Shahan, who, who also wound up with uh, two assists, and Brendan Smith with two points, a goal and an assist. Those are the three wings. My three stars are uh, Brendan Smith, Riley Shahan, and Jakob Kendall, and David Legwan. Oh, wait. Uh, well, my third star would be a, a tie between Jakob Kendall and Riley Shahan. My second star would, would be uh, Brendan Smith. And and my third star and my first star would be David Legwan. That's nothing to do with the goaltending. Both both goalies were good. Both uh, Howard and Darcy Kemper. Howard made uh, Howard and Kemper each faced 30 shots. Howard made 28. Or unlike Darcy Kemper, who made 27. So where do we stand? Let's go to the standings. Taking a look at the wild card standings, and it looks like the Wings are in the second wild card spot. They're in second place of the wild card standings, but one point behind the Maple Leafs, who who lost in regulation at home to the Montreal Canadiens. The, the Leafs have 80, the Wings have 79, the Blue Jackets of Columbus have 78, the Washington Capitals have 77. They, they're playing the Sharks right now. And checking all NHL scores, the Washington Capitals and San Jose Sharks are tied at one in the second period. With 12.49 left, uh, the Penguins and, and Lightning were fighting for the uh, best 
best record in the East. The Penguins beat the Lightning in overtime 4-3. The Ottawa Senators in lost to the Dallas Stars 3-1. The New Jersey Devils uh, are right behind the Capitals, four back, with 73 points. The Hurricanes with 71, and Senators with 69. Still stuck at 69 points. The Rangers shut out the Devils 2-0 uh, today. Hurricanes beat the Winnipeg Jets 3-2 in Winnipeg. And, of course, the Bruins, who already have clinched the, a play, who had already been the first NHL team to clinch a playoff spot thus far this year, this season, uh, doubled up the Coyotes 4-2 in Glendale. The Phoenix Coyotes, soon to be the Arizona Coyotes, next seat from next season on out. You can also, I forgot to mention the number to call in as, as a guest. The number is 646-478-4837. That, that number again is 646-478-4837. And, and uh, looking at the week ahead... The Red Wings continue their home-and-home -home set at the Joe against the Wild tomorrow at 7.30 on NBCSN. Followed by the Red Wings at Blue Jackets at 7.30 on either NBCSN or Fox Sports Detroit. Then on Thursday, the Wings return home and take on the Montreal Canadiens at 7 on Fox Sports Detroit. Then the Wings look to do away with the Maple Leafs in Toronto on Saturday at 7 on Fox Sports Detroit and the NHL Network. Then a week from tomorrow, from tomorrow, the Red Wings host the Lightning at 5 on Fox Sports Detroit to, con to conclude the month of March. So... Well, with all that being said and out of the way, let me go ahead and address this issue right here. All this talk about their injuries from their fans and some of the other media has sounded as delusional as the fans blaming the, NH the NBC announcers for magically or mysteriously causing the Wings to lose every game on NBC or, NB or NBCSN. It's uh, bl same same way they blame the referees, right? Up up to now, but like always, I'm not going to sound like that this at all, and I won't say things like it happens or it's part of the sport or part of the game or any crap like that. I know that I know all that already, people, and it's not funny either. I don't even care about that. Not one bit of it. I am more logical than that. I understand that injuries happen with all other teams a lot in sports, especially in, in the NHL. But I am going to get this off my shoulders and address this right now. This in injury situation the Wings are putting themselves into is getting way too serious now because over the last five seasons, including last year's lockout shortened season, almost every game they play, they lose at least one player to an injury, no matter how good their players are or how old or young they are in terms of age. They keep harming themselves physically. It sounds very serious and devastating, too. And now the Wings recently were up to 12 injured players at one recent point of time this week, which was earlier. The latest one being Jonathan Erickson out four to six weeks with a broken finger, and that's way too many injuries, but now dropping back down to eight, that, that excludes... Timu poking in as a healthy scratch earlier today. And in general, a few of those injuries, which also include Stephen Weiss's groin injury that included a recent setback that put him out indefinitely, and uh, Darren Helm uh, 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 are way too serious, and it's the most serious problem that's causing the, the team to tank. 
This has got to this has got to stop somehow. By the way, Darren Helm returned today to the lineup today to help the Wings beat the Wild three to two. The way to do that is for the Red Wings players to keep their heads up on the ice while the puck is in play and realize for themselves what physically hurts. All all those th there are a lot of things that physically hurt on the ice in a hockey game. You know, think about player safety 100% of the time. It's like having to keep your eyes on the road when you're driving. Once you gaze your eyes off the road and a semi-truck is coming your way uh, in an intersection, you could crash badly and, and get T-boned and suffer a, suffer a life-ending injury. That's the same way I look at possible season-ending injuries. And I do mean possible, but not official season-ending injuries, such as Henrik Zetterberg's herniated disc and Jonathan, Ener Jonathan Erickson's broken finger. Another way I look at the injuries as reckless driving on slippery roads. It's, like, it's also like reckless skating and hitting on the ice. Okay, maybe, maybe not that, but it, but it could still be like ripping yourself apart a lot while recklessly driving, which is like tearing your ligaments inside of your body as you aggressively overwork it. I can look at it in several ways I want to of driving carelessly on the roads as compared to taking very little or zero care of your super athletic body. As an athletic player, especially a hockey player, at all costs and all ways, you have to watch out for yourself, opposing players, and your teammates as well, in case they collide with you and cause a, a very serious injury with one of their skates or sticks, for example. The Wings players lately over the past five seasons, including this season, have not been doing any of those things to prevent them from getting injured, and they need to do that because they need to start doing that because they have to be more careful on the ice because these kinds of injuries have been happening too many times. The franchise has to have a has to have a more enhanced unwritten player health policy to prevent such an injury bug, injury bug that has been lasting for, for the past five seasons now. It's somewhat it's somewhat like a college sports team's unwritten policy that say, that's that says to stay healthy and protect yourself and your team. Yes, I am saying the Wings team is still busy, was was still busy creating th their own injury bugs. I don't know if they still are or not. Instead of trying to win more games with better health, although they have won three in a row recently, as of late, and they've been doing that this whole time since they lost their Stanley Cup in 2009. We are just sick of this injury bug worse than ever, and, and the reason why it's serious because it can downgrade your team and take them down the ladder especially in the clutch, in the standings, and very likely cause, cause them to miss the playoffs this season, unlike the previous four seasons before it. This all proves that they, that should be their own responsibility. Their own responsibility. And I seriously hope that their general manager, Ken Holland, addresses this serious issue and states this enhanced written health policy with the NHL, its Players Association, and its Department of Player Safety. The entire league has to agree on this policy, too. But, looking at the par positive part of the situation, the exact reports from sources say that Henrik Zetterberg was confirmed to be out eight weeks, hear me out on this one, and Jonathan Erickson, as I mentioned, is out four to six weeks. And this may sound more complicated, but they are possible season-ending injuries, like I said, but unlike how some of the typical Michigan sports media views it, I stick to the exact same timetables myself and point out that it doesn't mean that they are official, officially season-ending injuries. If the Wings can still make it to the playoffs and perhaps make it to the first round somehow, just as they did last postseason, maybe, just maybe, Zetterberg and Erickson can return to the lineup and start kicking some serious ice. I do mean ice, uh, uh, like in hockey, for example. But like I mentioned about the injuries, they have to be careful with themselves and watch out in that hockey rink 100% of the time. Think about player safety, but in the process, help the, help the rest of the wings get the job done and done right and win that Stanley Cup. Okay, now I'm finished. Let's go to other scores in hockey. Ferris State gets overworked by Minnesota 4-1, to and Western Michigan gets blanked by North Dakota five to nothing. Almost forgot. 
Let me play that one more time. I forgot to play it. Now, now it's all quiet. I apologize for that. All right, much better. Well, so other other scores in hockey, college hockey that is, Ferris State gets overworked by Minnesota four to one. Minnesota State four to one, not Minnesota. There, there's Minnesota State, um, and Western Michigan, like I just said, gets blanked by North Dakota five to nothing. So that's gonna, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this um, Red Wings edition of Taylor's Detroit Sports Show. I'm glad I get got. I, I'm glad I explained all of this off my chest. So what do you think of it? If there are no callers left, uh, I otherwise I might have spoke too soon. There's still time left. 11.51, 8.44, winding down. Pistons and Clippers uh, getting the third quarter underway. Just about a minute in. Clippers lead 56-55 over the, over the Pistons. Why don't we uh, go ahead and get other, other uh, college basketball scores other Detroit sports updates out, out of the way just to fill up some time. I apologize again. It's too quiet. All right. Well, great day in college basketball today. In the round of 32, Michigan finishes off Texas 79-65. Michigan was mostly shooting from point blank, especially from three-point range, while Texas was trying to attack the rim but didn't hit too many of their shots overall. And, of course, Michigan State survives a scare and hangs on to beat Harvard 80-73. Harvard tied it at one point midway through the second half and then took the lead at, one po at another point. With it, but Michigan State uh, came right back. They showed them who's boss, and they and they uh, managed to hold them off. So both the Wolverines and Spartans are headed to the Sweet 16. They are they are both headed to Milwaukee. to await their next opponents. Um, let me uh, check ncaasports.com. Official bracket. Uh, let's see here. Michigan will play either 11th seeded Tennessee or 14th seeded Mercer, who upset Duke in the second round, the round of 64, which I like to call it because it is. Also, Ohio State also. Uh, uh, Ohio State got upset as well by Dayton, 60 to 59. Dayton also pulled an upset today, 55-53 over Syracuse, number three seeded. They're on a tear. So for Michigan State, they'll play either top seeded Virginia or eight seeded Memphis. That. Those two go at it tomorrow at 8.40 p.m. on TNT. Watch for that. And and that's who, and Michigan State will take on either of those on March 28th on a Friday.
But uh, like I explained about this injury bug, you, you should look. You Red Wing fans should just uh, get it through your heads and uh, try to address this yourself too. Try to share it on, on Facebook. And and if you think it's not, tr and and if you think it's not true, that that's fine. But but it but it is. So I'd recommend that you share it. So uh, I'm pretty much done looking at the NCAA tournament to kill the rest of the time off, looking at the Tigers who lost again today, as well as yesterday. Blue Jays ended up winning 9-4. to Redmond, the winning pitcher. Lobstein, the loser. Tigers play the Marlins tomorrow at 1.05, I think. Yeah, 1.05. It's in Lakeland. Uh, Tigers beat the Braves yesterday 3-0. So, um, so that 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 first loss was Thursday to the Nationals, eight to one. So, pretty soon we're going to have seven days left until opening day at Comerica Park when they take on the Royals. First pitch is one oh eight. Justin Verlander will start, of course. Then Max Scherzer on Wednesday. Okay, now it's going to wrap it up for the Red Wing, this week's Red, Red Wings edition of Taylor's Detroit Sports Show. Uh, Pistons and Clippers are going at it, still going at it right now, so I'm going to decide to push it to tomorrow, push the Pistons edition this week to tomorrow night at 11. Tune in for that on Blog Talk Radio, Taylor's Detroit Sports Show. Till then, this is Taylor Phillips saying peace out, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Apologize for that. Technical difficulties.